Hello and welcome to this video on JSLOT machining within the CamWorks software. My name is Robert French and I'm an Applications Engineer for Go Engineer. Let's take a moment to quickly review what JSLOT geometry is. What is a JSLOT when we model it in SOLIDWORKS? Well, you can kind of see a picture example right there. And these types of features are typically created using a wrap command in SOLIDWORKS. But this is going to create faces aligned with the center of rotation. These different walls are going to be pointing directly at our center of rotation, which if our tool is also pointed at the center of rotation, we're not going to truly be able to cut some of these side walls. They'd be off by a factor of the tool radius. But we have other options for creating this geometry more accurately. We could use the cut extrude or revolved cut in clever ways. And we're going to go over examples of all of these in the software in a moment. But these are typical other ways we would use to create the geometry we maybe desire. And we can use other direct editing approaches, more direct approaches like move face, can create our required geometry, uh, but not totally required for machining. And we'll see what we mean by all this in a moment. Now let's take a moment to talk about CamWorks wrapped features. The SOLIDWORKS wrapped feature can be created in a number of different ways, but CamWorks has certain rules when it comes to wrapped features within CamWorks. First off, our faces have to be concentric to the axis of rotation. And normally we provide kind of a height to some of our two and a half axis features. We do something similar here, though it's not quite a height, more of a radial offset like you can see in the picture on the left. And this might not always match part geometry because of this, you know, tool pointing at the center of axis of rotation idea. And all of those walls would be offset by a tool radius. In order to get the actual geometry that we have modeled, we're going to have to use a multi-surface feature. In order to cut this multi-surface feature correctly, we have to use the multi-axis mill. This is the most powerful toolpath within CamWorks, capable of the 4 and 5 axis, but can also be limited to 3. And I just wanted to take a moment to review it, because it can be a little overwhelming with quite a few more tabs than some of our other operations. But we really only need to focus on the four that I've listed here. Our axis control tab, we need to assure that we're sitting to at least four axis to give the software flexibility enough to actually achieve and position the tool to cut the features we've identified. We're also going to jump into the pattern tab where we can really make our tools start to contour and follow the exact part geometry. And then lastly, we're going to go into gouge checking to make sure that we're not cutting into our part and ruining the workpiece. And a few additional tab options such as entry and retract and links can be used to just clean up the toolpath and make it neater overall. Let's jump into the software now and review some of these concepts. Here we are in software with a perfect part to analyze some of these concepts. You can see around the large diameter of this part some of these wrapped feature types that we've been talking about. Let's analyze their different styles. So we have a cut extrude for one of them. Let's look at the sketch to get a deeper understanding. And we can see that one side of the feature, one of the edges, has been set coincident with the center of rotation. However, on this bottom side, you can see how I've offset that particular edge by a radius of the tool I plan to use, 1875. Now, this would be the situation if my tool was forced to point at the center of rotation at all times. I'd expect more geometry like this, but this angle could vary slightly. But essentially, that final edge down here would not be pointing at the center of rotation. What about on a cut revolve? If we analyze the sketch here, we can notice that there's not really a lot we can do to modify those two particular faces that would cause us an issue. So revolve isn't really the best way. It can be done in, in creative circumstances, but not a very robust method, and I would personally not advise it. Let's lastly look at wrap. Wrap is also going to have the same issues that our revolve command has. We don't have a lot of control on these final faces. They're best basically projected normal to the surface they're applied to. And if they're normal to that surface, that surface is normal to that surface is always pointing at the center of rotation. Well, we're going to be in the same geometry condition we were with revolve. But there are direct edit tools that can allow us to, you know, manipulate this after the fact. For instance, this face essentially just needs to be offset by our tool radius. Well, in my tree, I have a move face command that's been suppressed. If I unsuppress that, we can see that face move by 
a value offset. I happen to type in 0.1875, and we get the required geometry we're looking for. All right, if we go to program that now on the CamWorks side, you can see I've already established a wrapped pocket feature, and we can see some of the geometry discrepancy we've mentioned already. It wants to point directly at the center of rotation and therefore can't take into account radius offset of the tool. No matter how we program this guy, which I programmed with a rough mill, and I turned all of the allowances of this rough mill to zero, when we simulate it, what we're going to see is those particular faces in question are going to have a little bit of material left over on them that we can't clean up entirely. So we're going to jump into a multi-surface feature and use our multi-axis mill command in order to pro properly program that part geometry. Let's go ahead and identify our multi-surface feature. I'll right-click the setup and say multi-surface feature. I'm only going to identify the faces that have this sort of pointing at center of rotation issue. Those three faces was where we have a lot of material left over. Let's right-click the multi-surface feature and apply our multi-axis mill operation. We'll choose our 3 8 tool. And in this operation parameter window that pops up, we're going to go through the tabs we identified earlier. Axis control tab was first and foremost. We always wanted to determine how many axes are we allowing this operation to take advantage of. We know we're going to need at least four. We need the rotary involved as well as X, Y, and Z. We want to make sure this option of pointing tool to rotary axis is not turned on. We've discussed why that would be an issue. And lastly, we're going to change the side tilt angle here to 90 degrees, which was mentioned in the PowerPoint. What that does, as you can see in the picture preview here, is we're not pointing the tool directly at these surfaces. We're rather using the side of the end mill as, you know, so 90 degrees would tilt the tool sufficiently to be doing true end milling as opposed to using the bottom of the tool. Let's jump into our pattern tab now. Instead of slice, which is kind of generic, just kind of does its own thing, it's arbitrary, let's try to have it follow our geometry a little bit more intelligently. I personally like flow line between curves. This requires that I click these two buttons for upper and lower to define what curves I'm talking about. For upper, we'll choose these three edges. For lower, we'll choose these three edges. That ensures that my toolpath is going to kind of follow those edges and, and give me a good result, a nice smooth toolpath along those. So let's hit preview and see where we're at. And the toolpath itself, red cutting lines, looks pretty good. We have some entry and retract issues we'll deal with now. First, let's get rid of a couple of those extra entry and retracts by allowing zigzag to happen as opposed to just one direction, zig. And let's jump to our entry and retract tab where right now we're clearing to a plane in Z. Let's change that to a cylinder about our rotary axis and set that equal to two inches. That clearance plane of a cylinder makes a lot more sense on a part like this. Let's hit preview one more time and see where we're at. Very good looking toolpath, though if I were to run simulation, I know that I'm going to gouge with some of these fang tooth kind of toolpath corners down here. Well, how can we protect this bottom surface of this wrapped feature? In my operation parameters, I'm going to go to gouge checking. I'm going to turn on gouge checking, and I don't really need to check if my holder, shank, and, and cutting portions are cutting or, or gouging. I know those aren't colliding, so I don't want to even spend the computing power on that. Let's just worry about the cutting section. Obviously, I don't want to gouge my feature, and I could also identify other surfaces I don't want to gouge by using this kind of expand button. I don't have any avoid features. Avoid features have to be created just like other features. Well, I can use this window and click the Create Features button. I can define my avoid feature by clicking on the surface I want to define, and we notice the checkbox in the property manager that really defines this as an avoid feature. Now once that's done, I'll identify that feature as being one of my avoid features I wanted here. And now my gouge checking is turned on to make sure my tool does not collide with that bottom face of the wrapped pocket. 
I'll zoom in on the toolpath where that fang is, and if we hit preview, we see that fang disappear. The tool is no longer gouging into that bottom face. I'll confirm my operation parameters, allow the toolpath to rebuild, simulate, and we can quickly see that feature created on size using this JSLOT machining method. That's it for this video, guys. Hope you got something out of it. Thanks for watching.